Okay, so recently I helped a friend of mine go from being a teacher to working as a data analyst making six figures, which is totally incredible. That's way more than I made in my first analyst job. But it got me thinking because many of the same things that he struggled with in his journey to become a data analyst are the same things that I see many other people that I talk to also struggle with. So today I wanna to talk through the advice I gave him and what he did to get his job. If you're watching this today and you're struggling to get a job in tech or data or wherever, this would be my honest advice. If you don't know me or you're new to the channel, my name is Matt Mike. I myself went from being a teacher and an education administrator to being a data analyst. And that was a move that completely changed my life and uh, I wanna help other people do the same. So today my goal is to give you a three-step outline for how you can start from point A and get to point B or Z, whatever you wanna call it, to get to your ideal job in tech. I'm gonna be talking through a lot of this in the context of data because that's the field I'm in and that's the field that I help people to get in. But honestly, this is a system that many other people People can do to achieve the same. So the first thing you need to do to get to your ideal job is you have to figure out where you're going and the steps you need to take to get there. So we're going to call that creating a roadmap. And when creating your roadmap, there's a few steps you need to figure out. The first is what skills do you need? Second is what resources do you need to build? You need to know what your time frame is and you need to know your non-negotiables. So let's start by talking about skills. Say your ideal role is to become a data analyst. You're gonna need to figure out what tech skills you need to get there. But let's take it a layer deeper and let's say you wanna become a Power BI developer, something of that sort. Or let's just say business intelligence developer to keep it simple. We need to figure out what kind of BI developer you want to be. So is that Power BI? Is that Tableau? Are you gonna need programming skills like SQL? These are things you need to figure out and then learn to get on your journey to having that ideal role. That one seems relatively simple, especially if you're trying to get into a technical field. Usually know the tech skills that you need to get there. But the second thing we'll talk about are the resources you need to build. Some good examples of that would be a portfolio. This could apply to a few different areas. Maybe you're a UX UI designer, but maybe you do wanna become a data analyst. A portfolio is gonna help you to demonstrate demonstrate the skills that you do have and give some visual examples proving to employers that you have the skills needed to complete that job. Especially if you don't have direct experience in that field, like let's take my friend for example, he was a teacher but he wanted to go to becoming a data analyst. So his main skills that he doubled down on were like Python, SQL, Tableau. Well he built out a portfolio which he didn't previously have to demonstrate some of those skills. Obviously a teacher teacher usually isn't using Python, so he had to build some pretty nice projects to show that he had those skills for a employer to consider him. And the next thing you need to figure out is your time frame. So in the example of my friend, when we first started talking, I want to say he had four or five months. And so that helped us to figure out how quickly he needed to take action, what he needed to do, and it gave him a deadline to work towards. So this is a time-based goal. And your situation might not be as urgent as his. For him, he needed to figure out his new job before he began his new teaching contract for the following year. So for me, I remember when I was trying to make the final push to becoming a data analyst, I was actually on a six week paternity leave and I really didn't want to go back to the job that I had. Uh, so I was trying to get a data job as quickly as possible. So I had already spent some time doing skill building up to that point. I still had a little bit left to complete, but for six weeks uh, with my wife's blessing, I really hunkered down and took advantage of the time that I had to try to get a job within those final six weeks. And I actually did. And having that time-based goal helped to motivate me. And it gave me something to work towards. The fourth thing we have here is your non-negotiables. So this could be salary, location, remote versus in office. For my friend's example, he was actually moving to Europe from a time, from the US. And so he needed to have something that was fully remote. Now, fully remote jobs are more challenging to get, but this is just what he had to do because he knew he would be moving back to the US eventually. He wasn't gonna be in Europe long term. So this was a tough one. And along the way, he actually interviewed with some places that were pretty good opportunities, but required him to be in the office for some period of time. And he had to turn down those opportunities because they just didn't fit. And that can be a hard thing to do is turning down an opportunity 
when you're not getting too many or you're trying to get into a new field that you don't have experience in. It takes a lot of bravery to do that. He did that, pushed through, and the role he ended up accepting was exact, it was the perfect role for him. It was exactly what he needed. So having a clear roadmap might seem like a simple thing or an, even an obvious thing, but if you really sit down and you write out what your roadmap is, covering these four things, what skills do I need? What resources do I need to build? What's my time frame, and what are my non-negotiables? That's gonna give give you something to hold on to as an anchor to guide you back to the type of role you're trying to get so you don't settle for something that is less than what you want. So let's move on to the second piece here and this is a big one. This is community. So when I talk about community, I'm talking about engaging in a community. And a good example of this is LinkedIn. So I would not be where I am in my career without LinkedIn. And the same goes for my friend. So when we started talking, he didn't really have much of a presence on LinkedIn. And that was one of the biggest things that I encouraged him to begin doing. And one of the biggest things that entailed, especially in the beginning, was posting. Now posting seems really scary and it kind of is when you're first doing it you can think what am i going to talk about i don't want to be a influencer or a content creator and you don't have to be we're talking about posting in the context of building exposure into the overall job market so that you can get noticed by more people and companies begin building a network and start getting hopefully some referrals and this this was a huge one for my friend so for a while he was doing the skill building but he wasn't really posting on LinkedIn or engaging in LinkedIn or anything like that. And when he started to do that and he started to do that aggressively, that's when he started to see results. And posting can be really scary. You can think, I don't know what to talk about, but there's a few subject areas that are very approachable material for you to begin talking through in your content. So the first is talking about your journey. So relating to people. And that could just be talking about where you're at currently in the job market, what your history is, talking a little bit about yourself, what your goals are, just sharing about your journey. This is how I started off, it helped me, and it helped him as well. And I've seen it help many other people. It's a really easy way to start and to introduce yourself to the community while you're trying to build some sort of a personal brand. The second thing is posting about your work. And by that, I mean projects. So my friend began posting projects that he was working on, posting Python projects, SQL projects, Tableau projects, and all that. And he didn't get a ton of engagement on those at first, but the more he did it, the more engagement he got. And when you post about your projects, you get free feedback, uh, but you're also exposing people to your work. So I've posted projects in the past and have literally had recruiters or company founders or whatever reach out to me saying, oh, I saw you know how to do this thing. You really know your stuff. Would you be interested interested in doing XYZ. Simply posting about your work, if it's quality work, really positions you as someone who knows what they're doing. So sharing your work is a really helpful way to gain exposure and build authority. And the third thing you could talk about is teaching concepts. So this could be teaching technical skills. Let's use SQL as an example. You can post something about uh, what are the different types of joins or how to use a case when statement. Or if you're talking about uh, some sort of data visualization tool like Tableau, you can talk about how to build a dashboard effectively or how to use parameters. Whatever the technical skill is, you can leverage teaching concepts through content as another way to position yourself as an expert or just someone who knows what they're doing, someone who's beyond the level of a beginner. And sometimes the volume of how much you post isn't as important as the consistency in which you post. So give yourself some sort of goal. I'd say, personally, I'd say at least three times a week, um, but trying to post as often as you can to build that network and increase exposure. And the more you post, the more people are gonna see your posts, it's just how the algorithm works. First time you ever post, you might not get that much engagement, but over time, hopefully you will, the more you post. So another big aspect of engaging in a community is engaging with people's content. So we're just gonna call this engagement. You don't want to just post 
yourself, but you also want to engage with other people's posts. Commenting on their posts, uh, just reacting to them isn't enough, but you wanna pick a handful of people that you can engage with regularly or just scroll through your feed for uh, thought leaders or peers in your space and just start to have conversations with them through creating comments. And the more you do this, the more they're gonna notice the comments that you leave on their posts, or you're also gonna get introduced to other people through just that comment thread the more consistently you do that. And that really helps to break the ice in a relationship to lead to the third step of engaging in a community, which is DMing people. Sorry, that writing looks really bad, but that says DMing, uh, so direct messaging people. This is really hard to do if you don't know someone. And I wouldn't recommend totally DMing someone cold out of the blue, but again, if you've commented on their content, you've broke the ice with them to some degree, and they at least know who you are. Try to comment on people's posts who are at target companies of yours or people who maybe have a little bit of influence who might be able to refer you to a role. So think people at target companies, recruiters, hiring managers, whatever. But the more you post, the more you comment in general, you're going to just build a bigger network over time. And this is a long-term approach. So don't expect that you're going to post, comment on someone's other post in the same week, message them and get instant referrals. This is a long-term strategy because you're building relationships and you're leveraging those relationships. So even if you have a smaller time frame, like just a few months, so let's go back to my friend's example, four or five months, which it's actually a good chunk of time. He still used this strategy. So he was slowly building his network over time and eventually that led him to a few referrals, which was incredibly helpful in him at least securing interviews and getting the ball rolling. And my advice for when you message someone for the first time is I would take a very selfless approach. So you can message them and just say, hey, really loved what you shared about in your post today. Just wanna say thank you. Something like that. You just want to give value to them rather than just instantly saying, I saw you work at such and such company, could you give me a referral? Because if you have bro already broken the ice by commenting on their posts and then DMing them by just saying something kind, then after some time, when you then come around and give your ask and say your ask is for a referral, they're gonna be much more willing to help you knowing that you haven't just like wanted something from them for the start or you're not just using them. Like you have some kind of a genuine relationship with that person. And that I've seen works much better than just cold DMing someone. I get cold DMs all the time from people wanting referrals and I either don't respond to them or I just say, thanks, but I don't really have anything to offer you. And even if I did, I wouldn't give it to them because I don't know who they are. So no one's going to refer you unless they have some kind of a relationship with you or they at least know you have some degree of expertise, which they've hopefully seen through your content. All right. So let's talk about the third step here, which is staying consistent. Consistency. Now, I think on the surface, this one seems like it's maybe a really bland point. Stay consistent. Well, duh, obviously. But sometimes we really need to hear that. And I think this boils down to a few different things. The first is pushing through roadblocks. So let's go back to my friend. Eventually, after some time of working his roadmap, he wasn't seeing the results he wanted to see, and he was wondering why. And then when we began to talk, it really came down to him just not putting in enough work. He wasn't being as intense enough about his job search that he needed to be. So for example, he was creating like one project a month and we upped that to, okay, now let's do one project a week. You need to be putting out more work, refining your skills more, posting about it more. So he started doing one project a week and posting about it. He started gaining traction from that. We saw that he was just posting once a week, which is okay, that's better than nothing, posting once a week, but we upped it to posting every single day. And he started doing that. Maybe he missed a day here and there, but for the most part, he was posting every day. And when he started doing this, when he started started cranking up the intensity, turning up the dial, working harder, putting in more effort. He really started to see the interviews flow in and he started to see results begin to happen. So it's not just consistency, but it's pushing through those roadblocks and working harder than maybe we think we are. We can think that we're working hard, but when you really sit down with someone and look at it or you look at it objectively and, and look at what you're doing, you can see that I could be working a lot harder than I am, putting in more time into it than I am. And I understand, you know, we have lives we're busy, maybe we're not able to, to do as much as we wanna do, but sometimes it just boils down to 
needing to find a way to put in more effort than you're doing. So say you're doing all that and you're doing all the right things and your intensity is cranked up really high, you're still not seeing results. Well, sometimes you could be doing everything right, but a tough job market is a tough job market. So the second thing I'm gonna say here is patience. You might be doing everything right, but if it's a tough job market, you just gotta put in the reps. You gotta put in the time. You gotta wait. You gotta keep applying. You gotta keep reaching out to people. You gotta keep working on stuff. You gotta keep posting and just continue working the plan and putting in enough reps until you get the results that you wanna see. It only takes one yes to completely change your life. So you might think that you're doing something wrong when you don't see results right away, but sometimes it's just a matter of having patience. Now, now, that's not to say that's always the case. So in, in this case, we several times examined what he was doing, came up with a plan for doing more, and, and, and he was working that, and he was putting in a lot of energy into what he was doing. In that case, patience eventually became part of what he just needed to incorporate into his plan. It's just continue working it. But some people, they're not seeing results, but they're also not doing nearly as much as they could, or they're not approaching things the right way. So I wanna clarify that point. But if you're working hard, sometimes you just gotta be patient to see those results come in. Okay, so let's recap what we've talked about today. So we're talking about having a plan and a strategy for getting a job when you're not seeing the results you wanna see. So the first thing is developing a roadmap, sitting down and examining the skills you need to build, the resources you need, the time frame that you're aiming for it to take, and what your non-negotiables are. The second thing is engaging in a community. And this is a huge one because it builds exposure. We do that through posting, and there's a few different topics we could post about, sharing about our journey, sharing about our work, teaching concepts, then engaging with other people's comments and DMing to build relationships over time. And I'd say this is a huge piece of the puzzle right here, is just engaging in a community and building a network. So the third thing is consistency. So once you have a program that you're working and putting effort into, you have to stay consistent with it. And that can look like pushing through roadblocks, finding out you need to do more, working harder. In fact, let me put that here, work harder and having patience and working the program until you begin seeing the results you want to see and evaluating along the way to make sure you are doing as much as you can and seeing where maybe you could improve. Before you go, I wanna quickly share with you about my new coaching program offer called the Data Roadmap, where we build a personalized step-by-step -step plan for you to get your dream job in data. After a 60 minute call, you'll get my very detailed, very thorough, personalized plan built in Notion, along with bonus resources like my LinkedIn profile profile checklist, recruiter and DM and email templates, and 10 LinkedIn hook templates to get you started with building a personal brand. If that's something you're interested in, I'll have a link in the description below for you to check out. So I hope that was helpful. Hope that process gave you a few things that you can chew on and hopefully implement yourself. If it was helpful, please like and subscribe as it does go a long way to helping the channel. Over here, I'll have a video linked on upskilling and a framework that I use to build technical skills faster. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.